Good morning and welcome to another channel, another channel, another video by Raisha UK. Uh, the channel that gets under the skin of Uber, the channel that dissects uh, Uber to the bone. Right, I've got a question uh, a driver was asking me and I just wanted to share the video with you uh, rather than answering him on his own. <laughs> now, what he said was, is Uber going to leave the UK after the court hearing yesterday? Now, I'm going to give my reasoning. Uh, sadly, all my reasoning seems to be correct. So there's a first time to be wrong, you know, in life. Uh, anything is possible. So the answer to that question is basically no. No chance in hell, as the saying goes. And you might be saying, well, what's, well how do you back it up? Now, this is going to fall into the hands of people who believe that the government and TFL are a team, like best buddies. Uh, it's mainly the black cabbies who actually think like that, and they are right in the thinking. Uh, they have been for a few times as well. So, for our case, let me take you back a couple of years when TFL actually made... Uh, compulsory or mandatory for the congestion charge to be paid by TFL drivers, um, which they never paid before. You know, any other taxi drivers, private hire drivers driving into the central um, centre of London would have to pay that anyway. Now, this is this is this is the main thing. It wasn't actual TFL who came out of, with the idea that everyone should pay. It was actually Dara Shai, the CEO of Uber, that basically said to TFL, why are these drivers not paying? I could get my 50,000 Uber drivers to pay the congestion charge. And when you do the actual sums, there's about, what, 120,000 private hire drivers in London. And say in a given day that half of them turned up, that was generating one million pound a day and the other thing was at that time Viavan was also operating very successfully and Uber sensing that there might be a backlash to this because drivers were catching on what's happened well, obviously they can't do nothing about it what Uber did then was they introduced a one pound pay ride taking people in or you know if you're traveling in or out of the city so this is one million pound a day from thin air uber generated for tfl so this is where it gets interesting that was just a slight background to it now tfl is a local government well you might argue they're on their own but just you know on the whole they're a local government now, central government wanted a bit of, bit of a piece of this. Now, I'm pretty damn convinced Uber was going to lose this case. Well, I mean, you know, you don't have to be too clever, to be honest. You know, they lost five times in a row. The chances are they're going to lose again, right? And the reasoning for that is, is because the gig economy is thriving employing millions and they're all on self they're all are self employed zero hours or some other sort of schemes but how is the government going to collect the right taxes taxes income tax of these drivers these econ gig economy workers that was a big big headache for the government so we will know how much uh, truly how much a driver runs um, as a private hire driver and if you didn't know look if you're watching this on Facebook just stroll down and you'll come to some earnings drivers are showing some of the showing they're earning 200 pound a day a day uh, you'll get some of the showing you know they've earned 300 pound a day as well and you wonder why people are not crazy about joining uber but are they paying the correct national insurance income tax to their earnings? 
Of course they're not. I would say an average driver would probably be showing around £300 uh, a week, never mind a day. Now, the thing is, the government is well aware of this. You know, they're, they're not blinded to it. You're not pulling a, a quick one with them. And HMRC, I mean, they do them random, uh, carry them random checks, but they are not effective or sufficient. So, guess who is going to give all this um, figures? Yes, it's our mate, Uber. This is the company, remember earlier on I said, that threw his drivers under the famous uh, London Red bus and made them pay congestion charge. This is the company. And now drivers, you know I mean? They have to show exactly what they've earned to the accountant. The accountant can't say to them, look, you know, you've earned uh, I don't know, fifteen thousand pound this year, and you're going to pay five hundred pound tax. They are forced to declare their true earnings now, and the correct taxes will be paid. And Uber will try anything, by the way. You know, they will get the public on their side to get them to use Uber because they'll be advertising like mad on them big blue. Uh, billboards saying how lovely our drivers are paying you know ex uh, this amount m amount of taxes and it should do by the way you know you, you, you do a quick calculation how much money that is actually going out of the driver's pocket before if someone was you know, paying 500 pound tax a year uh, times up by what well, half a million drivers um, in the taxi trade around the UK. You know that was generating what 250 million pound in taxes for the government. But now with Uber, their best mate, that driver could be paying five thousand pound a year in taxes, which will generate ten times more in taxes. So that would be two and a half billion pound coming to the government kitty that's a lot of money that's a lot of money coming out of the driver's pocket as well by the way and so to answer the question yeah sorry about the glitch yeah so if anything the government will do anything again to keep uber in the uk there is no chance that Uber is going anywhere. It's, if Uber decided to go anywhere, the government will actually pull them back in again. And this is my take on what exactly is happening right now. So I'll speak to you again, guys. You take care now. Bye-bye now.